Ready? Here we go. Hang on. Maybe we'll go. Does anyone want to sing? Anybody? Huh? Sing? Yeah. Tim, you want to sing? You look like you got a good voice. I'm going out on a limb. No. Yeah. No, you don't? No. Oh. All right. Well, that went nowhere. Okay. Here we go. What did I tell you I was going to do? Here we go. Watch. Write this down. Never forget it. Never forget this. Everything that you put into your pie hole, everything that you put into your pie hole, if it gets digested and absorbed, if it gets digested and absorbed into your bloodstream, yes, goes through the liver first. Everything. You're drinking that uh, Diet Coke, Megan? That Diet Coke's going to your liver right now. Huh. How do you feel about that? Well, now I feel like crap. Oh. <laughs> I don't feel that bad. Oh, okay, good. Who's with me so far? Okay, here we go. When you put, every, when you put something in your mouth, where does it go first after it gets digested and absorbed? Into your liver, right? That's why, watch. How many people work in an hospital here? Anybody? Work in a hospital. That's beautiful. Watch. If somebody's really jacked up, they're really a mess. I mean a real mess, right? Like they're really sick. Like they got a really bad infection. Do you want to give them antibiotics that get digested and absorbed and then go to the liver and get detoxified and broken down? Do you want that? No. That's why when you're really jacked up, they bypass the liver and give it directly into the bloodstream. They give you IV antibiotics because it don't go through the liver on the way in. So if you're in the hospital and doctor giving you IV antibiotics, you better get your affairs in order. It won't be long. Ready? Here we go. Watch. Write this down. This is for real. I'm not even playing. Every cell of your body, every cell of your body stores a little ATP. You got me? So I like Hot Pockets. Who likes Hot Pockets here? Anybody? Who said ooh? Huh. Anyways, I like Hot Pockets, right? So I got a bunch down in my freezer. If I wanted a Hot Pocket, would, I, would it make sense for me to go buy some Hot Pockets at the store when I have Hot Pockets in my freezer? So what fuel or what ATP are you going to use first when a cell needs to become metabolically active? That's the fuel. What ATP are you going to use? <laughs> yes, the one in your cell, the stored ATP. Tell me you got that. You got me? And how do you use it? You hack off that third phosphate. Say yes. That releases energy to do what you need to do. And what's left over? What's left over? Yeah. You better, yeah. ADP. Listen up because this is true. In your book they talk about this. Listen up because this is true. The buildup of ADP inside a cell stimulates the metabolic pathway. It makes it go faster. Tell me you got that. In your book, that's called allosteric regulation of metabolic enzymes. Say yes. Are you following me? So watch. If a cell becomes more metabolically active, who cares what cell it is? It's going to be using more ATP. So what's going to happen to the amount of ADP inside the cell? It's going to increase. And that's going to tell the enzymes of metabolism to start going faster and breaking down more glucose or fat, the fuel that's most readily available. Say yes. Guys, 
Okay. Now, to simplify things in this class, it's either on or it's off. You got me? So let's say, for example, that your whole body is just metabolically inactive. You got me? It's metabolically inactive, even though we know that if you're, you know, you're alive, most of you, right? So, and all cells have a little ATP. Say yes. So if all cells have a little ATP and you are completely metabolically inactive, which ATP are you going to use first? The stored ATP, right? So if you're not using it, if you're not using it, are you going to build up any ADP if you're not using ATP? No. no. And what's the most powerful stimulator of metabolism? The buildup of ADP. So if you ain't building up ADP, is metabolism within your body going to go fast? No. So watch. If all of your cells are metabolically inactive, I'm going to go real slow with this. If all the cells of your body are metabolically inactive, right? You're sitting on your fatty acid doing nothing. And you eat sugar. Is your blood sugar going to go up? Is it? Guys? Yeah. You better. What up, G? Pancreas going to release insulin? It's got no choice. Right? Insulin going to bind to that receptor? All day. Open up the little glucose gate? All day. And what up, G? is going to go from high concentration in the blood to low concentration in the cell. Say yes. Where does everything that you put your pie hole? In your pie hole, where does it go first? The liver. So in the liver, you better write this down. If you are metabolically inactive and your blood sugar is high, who's with me? And that means you don't need glucose to get into your cells of your body to make ATP. That glucose goes to the liver. And that glucose gets chemically bonded together and stored with water. And glucose chemically bonded together and stored with water is called what? Glycogen. Glycogen. Who said that? Wow, that's good. Nobody knows that. Just me and you know. Mm -hmm. Tell me you got that. Remember I told you the free-floating glucose would kill you if it got inside the cell? So when your blood sugar's high, and this is important, when your blood sugar's high and you're metabolically inactive, that glucose will go to the liver first, and the vast majority of that glucose gets stored as glucose chemically bonded together and stored with water, and that's called glycogen. And you primarily store glycogen in your liver. Who's with me? Can you store glycogen in an unlimited amount? <laughs> yes or no? Yeah. Could you ever use this as an excuse? Tim, I can't come to class today. My liver is out to here with glycogen. You ever see anybody's liver out to here with glycogen? You ever see that? Have you ever seen that? Oh, of course not. So is there a limit to how much glycogen you can store in your liver? Yeah. Yes. Listen up. I'm going to explain it to you and watch the logic here. When your glycogen levels are full up, Tinky Winky. Did you ever watch that show? There has to be subliminal messages in there, like to, you know, kill people or do drugs. Teletubbies? There's got to be subliminal messages in there, right? Okay, watch. If you are metabolically inactive and your glycogen levels are full and you eat sugar, are you with me? That glucose is going to go into the liver. Can it get stored as glycogen? 
It's full. It says right there, full. Can you store any more glycogen? No. So that excess glucose that's not being used to make ATP inside your cells because you're metabolically inactive, and it can't be stored as glycogen because your glycogen levels are full. That excess glucose goes through the dihydroxyacetone phosphate shunt. That excess glucose that can't be stored as glycogen gets converted to triglyceride. Watch it. And that triglyceride gets dumped into the blood, and guess where triglyceride gets stored? In a fat cell. Can you store an unlimited amount of fat? You can be as fat as you want to be. So you listen up, because this is true. Any carbs, fats, amino acids, any of those that you take in excess, the liver will convert it to fat and store it in fat cells. So it don't make no never mind what you eat, it's how much of what you eat. Say yes. That's why, what? The first three letters of the word diet or die. People can't diet forever. They can't. Who can eat rice cakes and drink Diet Coke every day for the rest of their life? You can't do it. So what people, and we're Americans, and what do we want? We want it easy, like a news class, and we want it cheap. We don't want to spend a lot of money. We want it easy, and we want it right now. So. That's how these little infomercials at 2.30 in the morning when you pretend like you're studying but you're really on Facebook, that's how they take advantage of people because people don't understand this. The, oh, yeah, take the fat-burning pill, yeah. Watch, watch. If those things really worked, big, powerful drug companies like Pfizer or Galaxa Welcome, they would say, hey, buddy, here's a truckload of money. We're buying this from you. And now we're making it where a doctor has to write a prescription for it. So if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Tell me you got that. But people, right, what do they always tell you? They tell you that you got to exercise to get into that fat-burning target heart rate, right? You got to get your heart rate up in order to burn fat, right? Watch. Here's my diet. The Frady Cat diet. You know what you do? Just scare people all day. Boo! And then their heart rate goes, hey, I'm burning fat. We should work that way. How many people followed this? Say yes. Okay, here we go. So I just explained to you, if you eat nothing but glucose, can you get tubby? Do you see that? Here we go. What's in a camel's hump? What's that? What's in a camel's hump? Food. Food? Like hostess ho hos. You just pop them in the top. When I was in sixth grade, I had a paper route, right? So I was making some coin. I was making like 20 bucks a week. That's what? That's like 40 years, over 40 years ago. That's huge money, right? This was my lunch every day. An eight pack of Hostess Ho-Ho chocolate donuts, the big one, not the little one. A bag or a can of Pringles. And uh, you remember those licorice candy snaps? Do you remember those? I'd eat a bag every single day. Every single day. No. You know why? John, I read the textbook. <laughs> you don't get tubby when you read the textbook. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't even that to exercise. I just read. Yeah, glycogen. Ready? <laughs> I hate me too, just so you know. It's all good. Ready? What's the goal of the body? Can't even do it anymore. Where do you store... 
extra glucose in the liver. What's it called? We, yeah, we're going to work on that. I'm going to give you the sed seven deadly words you can't say on TV. What does the, <laughs> what does the liver store? Glucose chemically bonded together and stored with what? And that's called what? Called glycogen. Write that down. Glycogen. What's glycogen? Glycogen is the stored form of glucose. Say yes. What's in a fat cell? Don't you wish that was a question? You know, I'm going to add that. I am. I'm going to add that on the multiple choice in the essay. Is that okay? Right? I'll have true or false. There's fat in a fat cell. <laughs> yeah? They get it wrong. They should fail on principle, don't you think? Okay, here we go. What's in a fat cell again? I forgot. Good, fat. Right? In the form of triglyceride. You got me? All right. Where do you store extra glucose in the form of glycogen? In your liver. What's the goal of the body? So watch. What does SlimFast do to you? It starves you. A shake for breakfast and a shake for lunch and then a sensible dinner. Hi, I'm Tommy Lasorda. So watch. Better write this down. Better not pout. When you starve, which Slim Fast does that to you? What's going to happen to your blood sugar over time? Well, look at the arrow. And the organ that's responsible for maintaining blood sugar is? Pancreas. Did somebody say liver? Did I hear liver? I'm going to pretend I didn't. Right? Pancreas. And then the pancreas is going to sense that and release what? Yeah, we're going to work on those words. Okay? When your blood sugar is low because you're starving, the pancreas releases the hormone glucagon. Glucagon. Glucagon is the hormone. Glucagon is the hormone. Glycogen is the stored form of glucose. What's glucagon? A hormone. You're not going to believe this. Watch. I am actually probably going to see heads actually explode right now. Watch. On your liver and on fat cells, you have receptors called glucagon receptors. <laughs> that was such a good look, too. Jalicia goes like this. <laughs> Watch. Why was glucagon released? Your, my what? My blood sugar. What do you think glucagon is going to do? Try and raise it. Go figure. So glucagon is going to bind the glucagon receptors on the liver, and it's going to break the bonds that held glycogen together, and you're going to free up, what are you freeing up? Glucose. And where's glucose highly concentrated? In the liver. So where is it lowly concentrated? In the blood. So glucose will go into the blood. What up, G? To raise your blood sugar back to homeostasis. Say yes. You also have glucagon receptors on fat cells. And when glucagon binds to glucagon receptors on fat cells, it will cause the fat cell to dump triglyceride into the blood. And as a result of triglyceride being dumped into the blood, what fuel becomes most readily available for the other cells of the body to use to make ATP? Fat. And you save the glucose for what? Your brain, because that's the only fuel that it can use. Do you follow that? That's why, who works in the hospital? Anybody? Let's see that. That's why when somebody's blood sugar's low, they give them 
glucagon. That made perfect sense, didn't it? I know. And you know who will explain that to you? Tell me you got that. Watch. When you break down your glycogen, because you're on slim fast, what do you free up? The only thing that's left. And water is going to move from the cells of your body into the bloodstream. And what's going to happen to your blood volume? And any time, I told you this, any time you increase your blood volume, you increase your blood pressure, and that makes you what? P. Does water have weight? Yeah. yeah. Carry a five-gallon jug of water upstairs, right? You'll be complaining. Complain about that book. So what SlimFast actually does is causes you to burn your glycogen, and you pee out that excess water that was stored with it. So they don't lie. Give us a week, we'll take off the weight, is true. Watch. But what you're really losing is water weight. Watch. You're not gonna believe this. And the thing that upsets me about this is I didn't think of it. So I could take advantage of people. Really? That's your goal. That should be your goal. Did I tell you? My buddy. He goes, Tim, don't be mad that there's stupid people in the world. Take advantage of them. Watch. Here's your weight, X. Right? And then Sunday or Saturday, you got to get into that green sequence dress. So you go on slim fast. Guess how long it takes you to exhaust your glycogen stores. And that's one week. Give us a week, we'll take off the weight. And then you know what happens? After your glycogen levels are exhausted, you start digging into your fat stores. And you don't lose water when you burn fat because fat is stored without water. Let me say that again. Fat is stored without water. So when you start burning fat, do you pee a lot? No, because fat is stored without water. Say yes. So what happens, their weight loss begins to plateau, and it, I'm going off if it ain't working. Say yes. How many people followed that? Give us a week. We'll take off the weight. Guys, yes or no? Okay. If I was given extra credit, this would have been the extra credit question. Watch. Didn't I tell you this? That's a camel. That's the head. Watch. If you strapped a can of beer to that camel's hump and you opened it and they went out into the desert, what would happen to that beer? It would evaporate, right? So if there was water in a camel's hump, what would happen to that water when they go out into the desert? It would evaporate. So if you get this right, I will be so proud of you. I'll give you these glasses that don't really work, and I had to put electrical tape on the arm because it got bent. Ready? What are the byproducts of metabolism? What's left over after you completely break down glucose or fat? CO2? CO2? H2O? Heat. Huh? ATP, you're missing one. And hydrogen ions. Say yes. 
fat or glucose, fat or glucose, fat or glucose. Say yes. yes so when a, ha a camel goes out into the desert, are they eating anything? What are they going to eat? Dust, <laughs> right? Sand. So what's going to happen to their blood sugar? It's going to drop. Do they store glycogen in their liver? Yeah. Yes, they do. So glucagon's going to be released. Say yes to raise their blood sugar. And then glucagon is going to stimulate the release of triglyceride into the blood. Say yes. Who's following this? You're really not, but that's okay. Fat is stored without water. But when you metabolize it, like camels do out in the desert, they make their own water. So fat is in a camel's hump. And then when they metabolize it, they metabolically make their own water. Camels don't move very fast, right? So they don't develop a huge amount of body heat. So they don't have to sweat to evaporate that heat, to take that heat away. Human beings, their body temperature is too high for them to metabolically make their own water. Tell me you got that. That was really good, and I got absolutely nothing. Like, you guys were just, yeah. Didn't you like that? That was good. Yeah, okay, fine. Right? How many people followed that? So, I explained to you, slim fast, say yes. I explained to you the functions of glucagon, say yes. And I explained to you, um, if you get... Uh, eat nothing but sugar, can you get tubby? Say yes. Boom. Rock on. All right. Last question. I'm going over the different tissue types. Are you with me? Ready? What's the functional unit of life? The cell. The cell has all of the criteria for life. It can replicate, it can make its own energy. So when we talk about tissues, we're talking about taking similar cells and putting them together. Say yes. And as you learned, and we talked about this, and in your book, I mean, how could you forget, that if you take different tissues and put them together, you make organs, right? And then you take different organs and you make organ systems and then you make you, organism. Are you with me? So what I want to concentrate on now um, are the tissues. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that you understand it from a clinical perspective. Are you with me? If you have to look under a microscope and uh, identify simple squamous epithelial, right? Then you can say, Tim, I had to do that as my job, and I will write you out a check for $1,000. You ain't going to have to do it. But these are the things that you're going to have to know. Ready? Ready? I want all of this. want all of this. What do I want? All of this. There are four tissue types. Tissue type number one is epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue. What does epithelial tissue do? It lines, it forms the inner and outer lining of organs. So it is the covering that makes up the inner and outer lining of organs. Are you with me? So, and some of these epithelial tissue will have microvilli in their cell membrane or cilia. Say, yeah. What I want you to know is this. If you get a cancer of epithelial tissue, you have a carcinoma.
Have you ever heard of basal cell carcinoma? Have you ever heard of that? That is the cancer of the outermost layer of the skin, the epidermis. Tell me you got that. Watch. If you have small cell carcinoma, you have cancer in the lining where? Uterus? In your lungs. And what I, this is what I want you to remember. If you have a carcinoma, it's cancer of epithelial tissue and it is cancer that lines the inside of organs or the outside of organs. Say yes. Then you have connective tissue. What, is, what do you think connective tissue does? I'm reaching here, spitballing hard. It connects. So you're not going to believe this, but most connective tissue is made of, oh, I'm going to write that. Most connective tissue is made of protein. Ah, oh. right? So you have structural and functional protein. So connective tissue is structural protein. So watch, watch. You have structural protein like tendons, ligaments, say yes, collagen, right? Those are structural proteins, and they connect. Watch. A tendon connects a muscle to a bone. A ligament connects a bone to a bone. Who's following me? Does blood connect? Well, let me, here, watch. Do roads connect? And remember I told you, I'll never forget it. It was a Tuesday. I told you that the road of your body is your... So blood is a connective tissue. Blood is a connective tissue. Are you with me? So when... If you're talking about all other connective tissue, excluding blood, if you're talking about all other connective tissue and you exclude blood, if you get cancer of a connective tissue, cancer of a connective tissue, you have a sarcoma. Have you heard of these terms before? You probably heard of them. Did you know what that meant? Did you? You probably still don't know. Say yeah. Who's with me? Now watch. The next type of tissue you got is muscle. For the crowd. And there are three different types of muscle tissue found in the body. You have skeletal muscle. Right? Skeletal. Hang on. That's bad. <clears throat> well, well, you know, good. This thing's dying on me. Oh, wait, that's probably why. Hang on. See, if I didn't record this, I wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, it ain't working tough. Okay, skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle. And smooth muscle. Those are the different types of muscle. Skeletal muscle is under conscious control. Can you consciously control your skeletal muscle? I'm going to pick my nose. See, I can control that. 
Can you control your intestines? Hold up, let's take a break. I want to contract my duodenum. <laughs> right? So smooth muscle and cardiac muscle are under autonomic control. Skeletal muscle is under conscious control. That's why watch, watch. Conscious control comes from your brain. You got me? I think I'm going to pick my nose. So if, when someone has a spinal cord injury, the ability to communicate with your brain and your spinal cord to your muscles is busted. That's why people can't consciously move, but their duodenum still contracts. Does their heart still beat? That's because that's under autonomic control. It happens automatically. Say yeah. And I know what you're thinking. If you take care of a paraplegic or a quadriplegic, well, why can't they pee on their own? Why can't they take a dump on their own, right? That's because your poop hole and your pee hole are under conscious control. Right. How many people have to pee right now? How many people are actually peeing right now? <laughs> right? So it's under conscious control. Now watch. When people have a spinal cord injury, what happens is their, their pooper gets shut down and their pee hole, their, right, their little sphincter that's under conscious control gets shut down. So if they don't have a catheter in them draining that urine, the neck urine's going to build up and it is just going to explode. Or it's not going to explode until the pressure builds up and it's just going to make you pee. Pooping's different. You can control that. You just, you know, tighten. <laughs> you do. Right? Well, they can't do that. That's why you have to do a bowel program on these people. So digital stimulation of the rectum and the uh, anal sphincter stimulates peristalsis. That's why you do it. How many people got that? All right. The next type of tissue is neural tissue. Oh, I forgot to tell you that if you get a uh, tumor of muscle. If you get a tumor of muscle, you get a rhabdo myo sarcoma say so, yeah and look I did it for you right here see how nice I am so those are the different types of cancers right blood is divided into several cancers because there's different cells in the blood that, that can develop cancer. Are you with me? The final type of tissue is nervous tissue. And nervous tissue communicates. It sends electrical impulses through the use of... Huh? How do the nerves develop those electrical impulses? There is a question. It's worth 210 points. Never forget it. Electrolytes. See? So they send electrical impulses. And if you get a tumor of nerves, you have a neuroma. So, yeah. so what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, is tell me the four tissue types, where they're found in the body, their function, right? Muscle is to store or contract, right? Movement. Nervous tissue is to transmit electrical impulses. Epithelial tissue is to line the inner and outer parts of body cavities and organs. Say yes. And um, connective tissue connects, holds things in place, connects different body parts to different body parts. Say yeah. And what would be nice if you told me what a sarcoma, carcinoma, sarcoma, uh, neuroma, and 
uh, myoma, right? No, you don't even have to do that. Sarcoma, carcinoma, sarcoma, uh, neuroma, and what's the other one? Yeah, the rhabdomyosarcoma, right? So, yeah, just so you know those terms, you hear those terms, at least you know what they are. Yes. Is that okay? Yes or no? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, did I answer all the questions for quiz number two? Did I? Yes or no? Did I? Okay. I'm not sure. Did I? Well, let's look. Where is it? Here we go. Here we go. Uh, label a composite cell. Boom. Done. Explain how a liver cell knows to connect with other liver cells. Done. What's DNA? Boom. Define chromatin and chromosomes. Boom. Two different types. Somatic. Sex. I explained that, right? Didn't I explain that? And I explained and Women are XX. Men are XY. Okay, I'll explain it now. You know what I was thinking about doing? Tell me if this is a good idea. That only if I don't get to something do I put that video up. Like if I can't get to something, like chromosomes and chromatin, I put that video up. Would that make sense? Yeah. I think that would make sense, right? All right, hang on. What's that? So they're really nice to reference back. Yeah, they help a lot. Even if you did go over it, it's nice to reference back. Yeah. Well, that's just too bad. But if you already have them, can't you just like... Yeah, if they're already up, I'm not going to take them down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, right, that's more work. And I'm, I'm, all, I'm interested in doing less work. You know what I'm talking about, Sean? Yeah, look. No one in their right mind would do this the way I do it. Are you kidding me? They'd have to be a complete imbecile. So you know what that tells you, Sean? Right, go ahead. You can say it. Are you going to you going to take the multiple choice? No. Oh, then you wouldn't want to say it because it's still subjective. Okay. Watch. How many chromosomes we got? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. 23 pairs, right? You get one from mom and one from dad or the milkman, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you that they should have a show, Who's the Baby's Mama? I'm Maury. Like, they get the DNA, right? And, like, you are the mama. Yeah. Right? And then they are the mama, and then they run off the stage. <laughs> that can't be, is that real? Some of it is. My friend of mine. You know, that really tells, it says a lot. They, they, they actually show them on the show just because the cameras. Oh, really? Do they? Yeah. It's, it's kind of real. Jerry Springer's fake. Yeah. Because yeah. I went to one of those. <laughs> who, who just said that? <laughs> you went to a Jerry Springer show? I did. It was in Chicago. Okay. <laughs> it was off stage. <laughs> Are you going to, you're going to ask, right? I can't ask. Ask. No. Why can't you ask? I'm a teacher, damn it. <laughs> Who's going to ask? <laughs> oh. 
You know, you guys got to be like wasted to be in that audience, yeah? <laughs> like those people that are in that audience, man, they look like they're pretty <laughs> wasted. <laughs> like they look like they're high. I mean, like they're not drunk, they're like high. Like they must be piping stuff into that studio. Anyways, here's the thing, and there's no getting around this, and listen up because this is true. Those shows have socially redeeming value. Here's why. You look at them and you say, hey, I ain't that jacked up. Look at those people. Okay, here we go. 23 pairs. One from mom, one from dad. You better write this down. It better be in your answer. Better be in your answer. There it is. There's the beer. Hang on. Look. Oh, no. Oh. I ain't doing nothing. I'm just trying to live. All right, what the? Oh, here we go. Okay. Right? And you have 22 pairs of somatic. Somat means body. So what they determine are your physical characteristics. How tall you is, how smart you is. Right? And the 23rd pair is the sex chromosome. And as you know, women, I never know that symbol. What is for a woman? Is that the, with that? Is that a woman or a guy? No, I think that's a guy. That's a woman. All right, and then the guy is with the, uh, yeah, with the arrow, right? Okay, so women have X, X chromosome and guys have XY chromosome. So watch. When you make sperm and egg, these 22 pairs of chromosomes, they split into, did I say 22? 23 pairs of chromosomes, they split into 23 chromosomes. So the egg has got 23 chromosomes, and it's always going to carry an X chromosome. And then one of the sperm is going to have 23 chromosomes of dad, and one sperm is going to carry the X, and one sperm is going to carry the Y. That's how the guy determines the sex of the child, right? The woman determines when the guy will have sex. Not no more, you know why? Why? I don't care. <laughs> so much work. <laughs> Gotta drive someplace. Everything is almost work to you right now, huh? What's that? You had a long weekend, huh? Yeah. Everything's gonna work to you know? I know. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't golf this weekend either. I think that's why I'm really upset. Yeah, it yeah. Nice yeah it was fantastic. And look what I did. I wasted my time. Yeah, well, story of my life. How many people um, got that? Yeah? Okay. So that's really what I want. And, oh boy. Watch. In healthcare, there's nothing you can do about genetic anomalies. Do you understand? As a nurse, you can't say, if I would have only done this, this person wouldn't have had Down syndrome. Or if I only would have done this, they wouldn't have, you know, muscular dystrophy. There's nothing you can do about it. So in terms of going into great and gory detail about that, you can learn that when you go to pathophysiology. Say yes. All right? But I do want to say this. When you have these chromosomes, right? You got me? You got... One from mom and one from dad. They're homologous. Do you know what that means? What does that mean, Rachel? I can't hear you. Yeah, but why do... How do they... Uh, watch. Let me, let me explain to you what homologous means. If this section of the chromosome tells 
um, codes for eye color, and that's dad. This section of the chromosome on mom codes for eye color. They're homologous. They come to, do you follow that? And that's, you know, that's how you can look at the genetic sequence and determine, you know, what eye color the kid's going to be or how tall they are. If you could, like, dial in a kid, would you? Like, you could determine how tall he was or you would do that? That's why, like, like young people, like the millennials, you know, like, that's why they don't listen to the radio. Like, one of the things I like listen uh, to the radio for is you never know what song's going to come on. And when, like, you like a good song, like, all right, cool. But if you had that playlist, you could just play your favorite song all the time, and then it wouldn't be your favorite song anymore. You'd get sick of it. And then you vomit bile in your car, get your interior all jacked up, and that smell, forget about it. See ya. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. I hate me, too. Say yes. Anything else? I did that. That's good. Boom. What's an enzyme? Cut it out. Four basic tissue types, right? Explain the functions of insulin and glucagon. What's ATP? What's ADP? Why is it important? Boom. Explain the three uh, fuel you're using right now. That's the fuel that's most readily available. What determines it? Insulin. Boom. Uh, explain in detail how the glucose molecule gets broken down. And CPR, boom, 14 and 15, rock on with my bad self. Say yes. Okay, so next Thursday, a week from this Thursday, October 5th, boom, we have quiz number two. Say yes. Just so you know, if you want to take the multiple guests, it would be cool of you if you could bring a computer. You ain't leaving now. We're taking a break. We're going over the cardiovascular system. <laughs> We ain't stopping. We keep moving ever forward. Take a break. I ain't stopping. I don't care. I'll talk to myself. You probably believe that, don't you? Oh, turn in your multiple guests. Bring it up here. Put it right here. Right here. You keep your essay. You know what's so cool? Okay, I'm old. Okay. Is he old? No, he's like 31. You know what? I bald for like a few years. It was like 24. It's okay. Guys can, guys can uh, say yeah. Okay, so that's your proton pump inhibitor thing. Did that make sense? And then there's your. Uh, what is that? Oh, that's a camel. I had a student. She just emailed me. She's uh, she just graduated. She just emailed me, Tim. I passed my NCLEX exam. I go, what's in it for me? Anyways, uh, the reason I bring that up is I drew that camel, and it's always bad. And she goes, Tim, that's terrible. And I go, you can do better. Yeah, so she, I go, get up here and do it. So she drew, she drew a really nice camel. All right. If you get this right, if you get this right, uh, what do you want? Huh? <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? She said to leave. To leave? You want, I don't care. You guys, you don't, I don't, have I ever taken attendance in here? Once. Once. Yeah, I don't care if you show up or not. Right? I got to do it one more time? I'm not doing it. Well, I'm not doing it. Okay. Everyone was here. Do other instructors take attendance? Um, some do. Yeah. I'm going to give you points for attendance. Yeah. A lot of people. Or do you think that? They do. Yeah, I'm going to get extra credit for showing up and then just staring at my Facebook all day. Watch. The only thing that will determine your grade in this class is what you put pen to paper.
un lapis or pluma. Write that down. That's ridiculous. This is college. Well, sort of. Anyways. Can I show you just real quick? Then I'm going to start. <clears throat> Hang on, here we go. And you know what I did? I said, I'm going to get nothing from this guy. Nothing. So you know what I had to do? I had to learn physical chemistry on my own. I'm laying it right out here for you people. Right? Edit. I mean, cut it out. Right? You have to do good. If you're not putting in the time, there is nothing I can do for you. Nothing. If you put in the time, you will do well. How could you not do well? Say so, yeah. Right? So I say it unto you. Do it. Don't do it. it didn't, don't make no never mind. Timmy, you know why, Celeste? No, I got mine. You got to get yours. No, all you got to do is study. That four-letter word, Sean. That four-letter word. I didn't say I was no English major. Okay, here we go. Cardiovascular system, say yeah. Okay, you better get this. Ready? What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk in Klingon for the rest of the class. Did you watch that Star Trek thing? No? Tim, did you watch it? Some of it. Yeah. Oh, sweet. What Star Trek thing? The new episode you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. How many people watched the Packer game? I'm writing your names down just so you know. Right? You got time to watch the Packer game. You got time to study. Mm-hmm. Here we go. What are the byproducts of metabolism? Carbon. Write them down. Write them down. Write them down. That's going to be a question. That's going to be a question. People are going to get that wrong. What are the byproducts? I'm not writing them down. You know them. Don't tell them. Don't tell anybody. You can keep that for just yourself. Then you can think to yourself, Megan... I know the byproducts of metabolism. Maybe nobody else does. Do you ever think about that? Huh? Mm -hmm. You do? That's weird. Here we go. <clears throat> What's the goal of the body? That's very good. You better write this down. Better not pout. The goal of the cardiovascular system is to maintain blood flow. How many people work in a hospital? Okay, what does Q mean? No, this is Q. Big Q, what does big Q mean? Yes, they do. They do. 
because people will, uh, the doctor will order a, um, a VQ scan. Have you ever seen that VQ scan? Oh, yeah. See, there you go. I thought you were meaning like, how you Okay, watch. Q means flow. Flow. What's in the cardiovascular system? What's in the cardiovascular system? What'd you say? Blood. So the goal of the cardiovascular system is to maintain blood flow or maintain Q. Say yes. And you better write, watch. There's a question on the cardiovascular quiz. What are the functions of the cardiovascular quiz? This is recorded now. So there's a question on the cardiovascular quiz. What are the functions of the cardiovascular system? Cardiovascular quiz. Is that what I said? Oh. I don't have any notes, man. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. So what, if maybe you learned something? I don't know. Right? Want to fight? <laughs> I had one student. She sat right there. She actually thought we were going to fight at the end of the semester. I'm like, okay, here we go. So those are the functions of the cardiovascular system. You learned, well, sort of learned one function, and that it is the radiator of the body, right? It can hold on to heat and it can dissipate heat. Ain't that right? Say yes. Now, what I, the reason I made you explain that to me, the reason I made you to ex explain that to me is watch. You don't know this, but you already know the signs and symptoms of internal bleeding. And you don't even know that. Are you ready? Watch. What's the goal of the cardiovascular system? To maintain blood flow, maintain Q. What's the most important parts of the body to maintain blood flow to? The core. So if somebody is bleeding internally, say yes, what will happen to all of the blood vessels in the non-essential parts of the body? They will constrict and cut off blood flow. So people who are bleeding internally, their skin will become pale and cold. Do you see this? Do you follow this? That's why I made you learn it. I don't make you learn anything just to learn it. There's a reason. I have a plan for your life. Yeah, I know I hate me too. Helps maintain pH. And how it helps maintain pH by getting rid of a byproduct of metabolism. The only one you know, which is, there you go, carbon dioxide. You better write this down. Better not pout. Write it down. Write it down. Getting. Getting rid of CO2. Okay, I need a good definition of an acid. What's an acid? Someone, I, so people wrote it on the quiz, so I know you know it. Who said that? Say what? You, I'm illegally deaf. Not even kidding. Stop in between classes. Uh, uh? Come on. Where is that in the vaccine? When it's dissolved in bodily fluids, it releases the um, hydrogen. Very good. That's very good, right? When a substance gets dissolved in bodily fluids and releases 
free floating hydrogen ions, that substance is a acid. Here we go. You better write this down. You know what? I, I'm, this is no joke. If you were to just learn this in this class, you will learn a lot. Ready? Watch. What's this? What's this? When CO2 from the cells gets dissolved in the blood, blood is mostly made of water, correct? It will combine and form this. What's this? No one knows that. This is carbonic acid. And it will break apart and form a free floating hydrogen ion. And what's this? Celeste, you know what that is? You were doing so good. You should have lied and said, yeah, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> this is called bicarbonate. Watch. All I want you to understand is this. When CO2 builds up in the blood, it forms free-floating hydrogen ions. So by definition, CO2 is what? An acid. CO2 is an acid. CO2 is an acid. CO2 is an acid. What's CO2? An acid. Yeah. Say yes. Okay, so how the cardiovascular system helps maintain the pH is by circulating that carbon dioxide to the lungs so you can get rid of it. That's how it helps. And watch, how do you get oxygen and glucose and fat down to the cells of your body? Huh? By peeing? How do you get it down there? Thank you. The blood, the cardiovascular system. Say yes. Okay, here we go. You better pay attention to this. This is killer. Are you ready? Watch. Watch. The cardiovascular system is divided into two parts. You have the systemic circulation and you have the pulmonary circulation. Are you with me? <coughs> Systemic means body. Systemic means body. Cells of the body. Cells of the body. What does pulmonary mean? Lungs. So the pulmonary circulation deals with blood flow through the lungs. Systemic circulation deals with blood flow to the cells of the body. Say yes. Okay, so Cardi what? Cardi what? No, Cardi, what does that mean? Heart. 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 Vascular means what? Say what? Vascular means what? What does vascular mean? Who said that? 
listen, I'm going to explain to you guys. I am illegally deaf in 14 states. Montana just emailed me. I can't go to Montana and hear anything. I'm illegally deaf. <laughs> right, you can say anything. But watch, but watch. I like when this happens, right? Right? People say, what is this? And then they'll say, but if I do something wrong, Tim, you said the devil's going to be on credit. You know how they get. What? Okay, here we go. Watch. You have vessels, and the vessels are divided into two parts. You have arteries, and you have veins. Tell me... You got that. If you get this right, this will be unbelievable. Nobody gets this right. Even Celeste doesn't get this right. What are arteries and veins mostly made out of? What? What'd you say? Say it real loud, but just leave the smooth out. You're right. Muscle. muscle. Say yes. It is smooth muscle. I don't even want it that far. Nobody knows that. How'd you know that? She read the book. She doesn't want to say yes. Did you read the book? <laughs> I know. People are shocked. Look at it. Better write this down. Arteries and veins are made of muscle. Right. I don't even care about that. It really doesn't really matter anyways. It's made, they're made of muscle. Arteries and veins are made of muscle. Jalicia, what are arteries and veins made of? Muscle. You did good. What are the two things that muscle can do? And contract and relax. Okay. An artery, is it round, square, triangular, or octagonal? It's round. You better write this down. That rhymed. I got rhymes tonight. It's round, so you better write that down. God, I can't stand me. I'll pay you guys 500 bucks right now if you teach the rest of the semester for me. Right now. Say what? Just, re you know, you guys mumble. Watch. Here's artery A. You better write this down. The wall, the muscular wall. The wall of the artery is made of muscle. Say yes. When that wall contracts, the size of the artery gets smaller. Say yes. What's it called when an arterial diameter was big and then the muscular wall contracts, and now the arterial diameter, this hole, the lumen gets smaller. What's it called? What's it called? Artery. 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 Say it real loud. Am I, right or am I, wrong? I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. I can't hear you. No, embolism, you die. You don't die if your arteries get small most days. You better write this down. It's called vasoconstriction. What does vase mean? It's the thing you put flowers in. Sometimes they get small. Because mm -hmm. they've been smoking a little wacky tobacco. A little chronic. Who smokes it? Hmm? I had this one student a couple semesters ago. She would come in high 
all the time. Did she do well? No. <laughs> she fell off her chair one time. I go, you are so high right now. What are you doing here? Why would you come to class high? If I'm high, right, I don't want to come to class. That's the last thing I want to do. Did I bust her? No, I talked to her at break. Then she ambulated home, I think. Maybe. All right, ready? If the artery was small and the muscular wall relaxed, what's that called? Work with Timmy. That's nice. See ya. Okay, watch it. You need to get this. You need to get this. The cardiovascular system, um, it, people find it either real easy or welding. Or horticulture. Ready? Now watch. You have two types of vessels, arteries and veins, both of which are made of muscles. Say yes. You better write this down. Arteries, and I'm writing this down. Arteries. Arteries. Systemic arteries. Systemic. Systemic. Arteries that supply the cells of your body. Arteries that supply the cells of your body. Number one, carry O2 rich blood, oxygenated blood. Are you with me? Number two, they are under pressure. Boom, 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 boom. You got me? Under pressure. Number three, they are the, what they're called the resistance vessels. Very important, very important. Resistance vessels, resistance vessels. You got me? Number four, get, get, I got two T's and get. I'll just make it one big T. <laughs> they get smaller as they get closer to the cell. Are you with me? Those are systemic arteries. You got me? What kind of blood do they carry? Is that uh, blood under pressure? So when you take somebody's blood pressure, you're measuring that pressure in the brachial artery. Why? Because it's under pressure. What's the heart made out of? What are the two things that muscle can do? Contract and relax. I'm going to show you. You're going to learn systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And I'm going to tell you this right now. That's going to be a question on everyone. Multiple guests or essay. Say yeah. You get that wrong. Your whole quiz is wrong. You're not going to leave this class not knowing that. Do you understand? Because let's say, for example, that you get through this program. You become a nurse, right? And you take somebody's blood pressure. And they say, hey, what do those numbers mean? You go, I don't know. I got that one wrong. <laughs> You're going to know that at minimum. Say yes. All right? So what do arteries do? They get smaller as they get closer to the cell. What's the smallest blood pressure you got in your body? What did I say smallest blood pressure? Smallest blood vessel you got in your body. 
A capillary. How thick's a capillary? What? Now, 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 this will make sense. Watch. Watch. Look at your notes. Look at them. Look at them. The ones you just wrote. You have an arterial end of the capillary. And you just learned that arterial, systemic arterial blood is what? What's a byproduct of metabolism that you've got to get rid of? And where's carbon dioxide highly concentrated? So oxygen will move from high concentration to low and sit at the end of the electron transport chain. And CO2 will move from high concentration in the Krebs cycle to low concentration in the blood. Are you with me? That is the point that arterial blood becomes venous blood. That's why it's called circulation. It's a circle. Circulation. Say yes. Okay. Let's go back to dude. You better know about arteries. Say yes. Systemic arteries. Say yes. Okay. Hang on, I gotta find this. Hang on. Oh, here it is. This is my favorite video. Oh, no, that's me. Well, that is my favorite video. Oh, just so you know, I made videos on the parts of the heart. Did you see that? I did. And then all the arteries and veins. See how nice I am? You know, I'm going to stop doing all that. You know why? Yeah. Every day, son of a... This computer... I got to find it. It's the best video ever. Here it is. Brush the blood with a new supply of oxygen. What do you know, buddy? Okay, here we go. Watch. Watch. Who's watching? All I want you to do is look at this video. Look at it. And if you rock while you're looking at it, you'll understand it better. I don't see a lot of rocking. Okay, watch. These are the systemic arteries, these guys right here. Do you see that? What kind of blood is in the systemic arteries? Oxygenated blood. And it's under pressure, correct? All right. This is very important that you get this. What happens to the pressure inside those arteries as that blood leaves the heart and starts getting closer and closer to the cell? That pressure goes... That's very good. That's very good. How many people, you understand this? Say yes. I hope you did. All right, so watch. There are some basic fundamental principles, and this one that I'm about to explain to you, I can't even begin to tell you how important it is. If you don't understand this, you don't get this, you will never understand congestive, you won't understand anything. People will start talking to you about any subject, and you are like, what? I don't understand, because you didn't understand this. <laughs> that was supposed to be, oh, wow. You know what? Can I tell you something? Do you think it's easy sitting up here trying to be an idiot? Do you think it's easy? Don't answer that. <laughs> Here we go. Please get this. 
This should be intuitive. What happens to the pressure inside the arteries as you leave the heart and you get closer and closer to the cells of the body? It goes down. Just so you know, the pressure in the left side of your heart, you got me? When the left side of your heart contracts, that pressure is about 160 millimeters of mercury. Tell me you got that. When that blood gets down to the brachial artery, that pressure drops to about 120. That's why normal systolic blood pressure is 120. Say yes. So what's going to happen to the pressure as you get down farther and farther and closer and closer to the capillaries? What's going to happen to the pressure inside those arteries? Good. What's going to happen to the diameter of the arteries? That's good. See how I made that one big and that one smaller? And then this is so small, I can't even make it any smaller when it gets down here. So watch. You need to get this. And I'm not even playing. You're going to get this. Watch. When that blood and that systemic artery, right, gets down to the level of the capillary, the pressure in that capillary is oxygen is about 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury. Tell me you got that. Very, very little pressure. Now watch. It wouldn't make sense to have a lot of pressure. How thick are capillaries? That's why, watch, when somebody's got high blood pressure, that pressure is transmitted from the heart to the arteries, the arterioles, and down to the capillary. And if the pressure in the capillary gets high enough, they start busting. And if they bust in your brain, you drool out of the side of your mouth. You get a stroke. If it happens in your heart, you get a heart attack. If it happens in your kidney, you end up on dialysis. Say yes, assist. That's why high blood pressure be bad for you. <laughs> Say yes. You followed this. Watch. You're going to get this. You are. Go ahead. Don't get it. See what happens. Just so you know, my ma didn't get this. She's on dialysis. Watch. What's the pressure in the arterial end of the capillary? As that blood in the arterial end of the capillary goes and passes the cells, in the venous end of the capillary, the pressure, pressure is zero. Nada, nishta, nothing. Write this down, tattoo it in henna. If you do that, I will give you mad extra credit. Mad, mad. You'll go crazy. There's no pressure in the systemic veins. There's no pressure in the systemic veins. I'm going to say that real loud. How many people are with me? <laughs> Write this down. Never forget it. Who's writing it down? Anybody? Yeah. Who? Yeah. You ain't writing nothing down. I know you guys. That's okay, don't. I don't care. Watch. Watch. Hang on. Systemic veins take blood back to the heart. <laughs> S 
Systemic veins take blood back to the heart. Are you with me? What kind of blood is being transported back to the heart through systemic veins? That's very good. So you better write this down. So, ooh, that's two. Mm. Is that good? Veins. This is like, this ain't even a pen. What is this? Oh, oh, cut it out. Look at that. That looks pretty cool, kind of like 3D almost. Veins, veins, better write this down. No pressure, no pressure. What kind of blood are transported back to the heart through systemic veins? So blood that is low in oxygen and high in CO2. And it's less filling. Are you with me? Guys? Is there any pressure in the veins? Very good. Okay, I'm going to explain this. If you get this, you can ambulate home. I don't even care. As a matter of fact, I don't even care if you ambulate home now. Right? You know what? I'm going to ambulate home now. Okay, wait. I'm not doing that. Too old. Look. Is my big toe alive? Yes. How do you know? You'd be rotten off right now. <laughs> Is my big toe alive? Yes. Good. Do I have to get oxygenated blood down to my big toe to make it feed it, right? Yes. yes. That's very good. So when I need oxygen in my big toe, right, my big toe is going to produce carbon dioxide. Say yes. And at the level of the capillary in my big toe, arterial blood becomes what? And is there any pressure in the vein? So how does venous blood get back to my heart if there's no pressure? What, by what? The size of the veins get bigger as they get closer to the heart. So if there's no pressure in the capillary, there's even less pressure as it's moving back. How is there, if there's no pressure, how do you get venous blood back to your heart? Now listen up, because this is true. We have evolved where we don't even notice it anymore, but every couple of minutes, you stand on your head. And now we've just forgotten about that. So we stand on our head to get that blood by gravity back. And we don't even notice it anymore. What? What does that mean? Yeah, here's the vein. Right? Vein. There's no pressure. When you contract the muscle, what are you telling me? You're squishing the vein a little bit? You squish it. What are you going to do? You contract your muscles all the time? <laughs> You're going to have to relax them at some point, right? And when you relax them at some point, the blood's going to fall all the way back down. So you're really screwed, aren't you? What I'm about to tell you next, I'm not even kidding. You need to get the, How many people have had surgery? How many people have had abdominal surgery? Well, go, you've had abdominal surgery? Yeah, that's abdominal surgery, man. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. I'm going to golf. When you have abdominal surgery, you don't want to move. Do you want to get up and move your face? I don't think so. So when people come out, any surgery, but mostly abdominal surgery, they got these things on that inflate and deflate. What are they called? 
Bless you. They're called sequential compression stocking <coughs> boots or something. Are you with me? Okay. You need to get this. I had a student fourth semester pathophysiology a year ago. She had no idea what I was talking about. I go, you're going to be dangerous. You're dangerous. You people right here are not going to be dangerous. You know why? Because if you are, well, some of you will probably just rub you out. That'll be it. You need to get this, and you will get this. And, of course, you have no choice. Is there any pressure in the veins, systemic veins? Write this down. I'm not writing it down. You're students. The largest veins of your body are deep inside your leg muscles. The largest veins of your body are deep inside your leg muscles. How many people like to walk? You like walking? I like getting in my car, sitting on my fatty ass and all the way home. Yeah. How many people are going to do it tonight? I think four. Four people are going to do this tonight. They're going to have to pee, but after class they're like, you know what, I'm going to chance it. I'm going to drive home without having to pee. <laughs> right? And then you're driving home like, ooh, I, I, I can make it. I can make it. And then you get right to the door, right? You're fumbling for that key. I'm like, come on, I got to go. <laughs> right? Women. Bleh. Guys, man, I just pee on the porch. <laughs> you do that, don't, don't you? Yeah. I know, right? That's so stupid. Uh, look, you're preaching to the choir, sister. I mean, for real. Okay, here we go. And eh, somewhere out here. Come on. Yeah, the Respondus Lockdown Browser, if you ain't got it, well, you better get it. You can't what? You can't Google answers. Right. Right, that's why I do it. <laughs> you can't get off that screen. I've been there before. Oh, you're trying to cheat then too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm writing that down. Right, that's on tape too. Megan, <laughs> Megan blank. Not in this class. Oh, ain't going to believe you. <laughs> See, I'm taking that to the dean. Yeah, Megan Black, you dream of being a nurse. You better look at horticulture right now. No. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm looking at some dentist stuff. stuff. Oh, yeah, we got that. Okay, watch. Any pressure in the veins? Where are the largest veins of your body? Deep inside your leg muscles. Say yes. How many people have ever watched Ever watch those best beaches in the world show? You ever watch those shows? And they always show that 70-year-old guy, right? He's got the big gut, right? And he's wearing Speedos. No man should wear Speedos, even if they can. Write that down. <laughs> and then if you look at his legs, he's got those natty, nasty-looking what? Varicose veins. Say yes. Watch. You better write this down. Better not pout. Any pressure in the veins? No. Veins have inside them one-way valves. No, you didn't know what she would have told me. You learned it right here at 821. Write that down. Veins have one-way valves that only open up towards the heart. Tell me you got that. Where are the largest veins of your body? Deep inside your leg muscles. Say yes. What do leg muscles do? Contract and... There you go. How many people? 
when you were a kid. Maybe now. Maybe you still do it now. Your mom buys you those freezy pops. Then you put them in the freezer, right? And every 10 minutes you're thinking, well, testing them. Then finally you forget about them. You wake up and go, hey, those freezy pops. I like those uh, the purple ones. Those are good. Right? So you bite off the plastic, right? You and then you start at the bottom and you push it up. Right? But if you let go, it goes all the way back down. Ain't that right? So watch. This is what the valves do in your veins when you walk. When you contract the muscle, you will squish your veins. And when you squish your veins, you force open those one-way valves and move that venous blood back to your heart. Tell me you got that. Who's with me? So when you get up and you move, you are going to contract your leg muscles, and that's like squishing the squishy pop, right? You squish it, it forces open that one-way valve, and it starts moving that venous blood back to the heart. Say yes. Totally got that. So, just write this down, never forget this. How many people work in a hospital? Anybody work in surgery? You used to work in surgery? Okay, here we go. When people come out of surgery, say yes, they have those little sequential compressions because they don't want to get up. Say yeah. And blood, especially venous blood that don't move, <coughs> clots. So that's why after surgery, they start sticking you with needles in the belly. What is that? Lovenox. And Lovenox is an anticoagulant. It prevents the formation of blood clots. Say yes. How can you get a blood clot? Well, if you don't get off your fatty acid and move, venous blood, there's no pressure. And if there's no pressure in the veins, that blood will settle there. And it will form a clot. Say yes. That's why when Nurse Ratchet comes in and she wants to get your fatty acid up and moving, she ain't doing it to be mean. She's doing it to save your life. They want you up and moving because if you don't move, that venous blood will sit there. It can clot. And can a venous clot that's in the leg, a deep vein thrombosis, you've heard of this? Can it cause a stroke? Yes. Say no. You're going to learn. You're going to learn. Write this down. Never forget it. Write this down. Never forget it. Jaleesa, are you going to write this down and never forget it? <laughs> Ever. So if you come in on, to, on, on Thursday and I ask this, you're going to just, uh, Tim, that's like saying, my name is, right? Watch. All systemic veins. All systemic veins. Sean? All systemic veins. Rachel? All systemic veins. Dump their venous blood into the right side of the heart. <laughs> don't worry that you don't know what that means. Where do all the systemic veins of your body dump their venous blood? Right side of the heart. So watch. This is what happens. You're sitting around, not reading a textbook, sitting on your fatty acid, right? Then all of a sudden you start developing a buildup of marshmallows with some certs in them. <laughs> this is a blood clot. Right? And when that blood clot, that deep vein thrombosis splits off and starts moving, it becomes an embolus. An embolus is a traveling clot. And what happens to the diameter, the size of the veins, as they move away from the cells and get closer and closer to the right side of the heart? They get bigger. 
So when that clot busts off, is it going to block any of the veins on the way back to the right side of the heart? Nope. Boom. There it goes. Traveling. Boom. Oh, yeah. Look at that. There he goes. Just so you know, listen up because this is true. When you get a deep vein thrombosis and it embolizes, it will actually light up. You will see it come like, oh, <laughs> not you can do. <laughs> Just think of that happen, man. Like, oh, here it comes. All right. All right. So what happens to the size of the veins as they get closer and closer to the right side of the heart? They get bigger. So that clot is not going to block any of those veins, but it will go to the right side of the heart. Now watch. Watch. Where is it? So in this little diagram here, watch. You got a blood clot here. Oh, you no good. See, I got to stop this. You know, if you guys would just read the textbook, my life would be so much better. Yeah, but it's clear you don't want my life better, do you? I mean, that's a big blood clot. Watch, that blood clot is going to travel. You got me? That guy's dead. All right, and then it's going to go to the right side of the heart. Are you with me? And then that, that deoxygenated blood, the blood that's high in CO2 and low in oxygen, it gets pumped to the lungs. What happens to the size of the blood vessels as you get deeper and deeper into the lungs? They get smaller. So a deep vein thrombosis causes a pulmonary embolus. It can't cause a stroke. Say yes. And if you get one of these, and if it's big enough, boom, it's officially over for you. If it's big enough, you die. You go asystole, you take a six-foot dirt nap. That's why they get your fatty acid up and move you. Say yes. And watch. How do people breathe when they have abdominal surgery? They're like this. Right? And if you don't expand your lungs, you get pneumonia. <laughs> your lungs start collapsing. That's why respiratory therapy comes up. And say, okay, Jasper, light the clown's nose up. Take a big deep breath and blow it out because they don't want you getting your lungs collapsing and you getting pneumonia. Tell me you got that. Yeah. That's why they do that. Every time they do something, there's a reason they're doing it. They just don't do it. Hey, we ain't got nothing to do. Tell me you got that. And unless you know that there's no pressure in the veins and veins have one-way valves, you will never understand that. Say yes. yes. Okay, ambulate home. You did good. Bring your lab book. Bring your lab book.